happened in the day when they were created. They both Adam heard the Neo. voice of the Lord God. Adam, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. Why are you hiding from me? I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. You could not hide from me. Who told you that you were naked?
abide, you won't go hide. Hallelujah. That is one of my originals on my CD. I'm actually singing and doing the backup as well. I tell people I didn't get it done the way I wanted it to, but what happened, someone um, got involved in drugs in the studio, so we never did go back and clean it up. So I let it went the way it was. Hallelujah.
You can tell I'm still dealing with these allergies, but praise God, whatever it is, it's getting much better. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I bless your holy name. God, I thank you for this opportunity to come before your people once again. God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your long suffering. God, I thank you for giving me grace to endure whatever I go through. God, I thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Oh God, I thank you for blessing us. Oh God, I thank you for keeping us. God, I thank you for ordering our steps aright. Oh God, in the name of Yeshua. God, I thank you for your dear son that gave his life for this entire world, that we all could have life and we could have it more abundantly. I thank you, Father, when we confess and forsake our sin, the blood of Yeshua continue to cleanse us. God, give us a heart to hear, eyes to see. Give us hearts, open our hearts that our hearts can see. Open our eyes that our eyes can see. Unstop our deaf, deaf ears that we can hear clearly. Sharpen our ears, oh God. In the name of Yeshua, God, I ask you to bless every church, every ministry, everyone, oh God, who's bringing forth your word today. Move by your spirit, oh God, and let truth rain down like dew. God, let there be transformation today, oh God. Let someone come to you, oh God, that you could point them to your son, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. Because Yeshua said no one can come unto him except you do the drawing. And we know that it is your son that manifests you because Yeshua says no one know who the father is but the son and he that whom he revealed himself. So God, we ask you for manifestation today in the name of Yeshua. If anyone is sick among us, God, we ask you to heal the sick, raise the spiritually dead in the name of Yeshua. Father, I love you. I praise you and I honor you. Let the Holy Ghost fall on me today, oh God. That no matter what I have written down, oh God, that you put words in my mouth, words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, oh God. Help me only to speak that which you give into me, oh God, which you reveal by your spirit. In the name of your Yeshua, let your people be blessed. Let your people be built up today. In the name of your Holy Son, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome each and every one of you, I can see I'm kind of losing my voice again. Hallelujah, but it shall pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I always say, the devil can't hinder you, but he can't stop you. Hallelujah. We are continuing in our study. Well, no, we actually finished the study last week. But the Lord placed something in my spirit uh, to go through today. And I said in my spirit on yesterday when I came to work on it, I said, well, maybe not to Sunday. Sunday is a time for church, you know. And I heard the Lord said, bring it forth today. <coughs> now, maybe because we're not promised to be here tomorrow. And so some of the things we'll cover. I have my ice water. So some of the things we'll cover as we go forward today, if it be the Lord's will. Uh, I'm titling this part two because last week we can't did part one. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. That means it's time for us to rise up, people. Enough is enough. Someone said if you don't stand for something, you'll stand for anything. 
And so cut the snake head off, line spirit, and root up bad seeds. But hate evil, love good, uphold justice, judgment at the gate. So I heard that snakes could probably live on for minutes or even hours after servicing the head isn't going to cause immediately death in the animal. He will attempt to order the season and the law and use the people of the Most High, wear them out. So first of all, just in case, do we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we are justified by our faith. If we believe in God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we are justified by our faith. Then we are to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God has raised Yeshua from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, man continue to believe unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. So I'm going to cover these things we're going through again. Enough is enough. Cut the snake head off, blind spirit, and root up bad seeds, but hate evil, love good, uphold justice, judgment at the gate. So I heard that snakes could probably live on for minutes or even hours after servicing the head isn't going to cause immediately death in the animal. He will attempt to alter the season and the law and use the people of the Most High, wear them out. Even when these lying spirits are cut off, no longer around, it would take a very long time to unify even those who call themselves followers of the Messiah. Because of the poisonous lies, they have digest. We are going somewhere, trust me. <laughs> like I said on last week, I'm not afraid to speak whatever the Lord put in my mouth. It kind of reminds me of my song. I would teach it. Even if they don't receive it, I still will teach it. I continue to hear, cut the snake's head off. But it will take a long time for the body of the Messiah to heal. Let's say that again. Even when it came into my spirit to title this, cut the head off. It just kept repeating. And I said, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. But it came to my spirit again this morning and last night. Cut the snake's head off, plural. But it would take a long time for the body of the Messiah to heal. Other words, because of lying spirit, the body of the Messiah is scattered. Because of that poisonous, lies, deception, they have digest. So it's going to take a long time to unify the body of Christ. It's going to take a long time to bring some kind of unity even to the world. But what's so powerful, we as the body of Christ should speak the same thing, preach the same thing, have the same mind, have the same judgment. While, as we covered last week, when you speak of worldly people, the Bible said the word of God is foolish to them. Other words, if we're not in the Messiah, certain things I say may sound foolish to us. But if we're in Yeshua the Messiah, it should not be foolish to us. 
We're to get wisdom, knowledge, and above all, get understanding. As we said last week, enough is enough. Things are getting worse. They are not getting bad. Even lies that have been proven uh, through these, uh, through these uh, meetings, people don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. Even if they hear it, they are rejecting it. And even with all the information of the lies and deception that's coming out, this snake continue to lie and continue to deceive God's people. Now, I tell people I judge by what I see and what I hear with my own ears. On yesterday, I heard it out of his, this snake mouth again that these wonderful people being mistreated, and if I win, I'm going to pardon them. Said nothing about the person who people that died, lost their lives, cops that get hurt, that got hurt, didn't even mention them. He was only concerned about those who were supporting him. That is a snake, a snake, a deceiving snake. That snake need head need to be cut off. Notice what I said. When I say cut off, I'm meaning lying spirit. Need to be cut off. So the body, especially of your shoulder Messiah, can be healed. But in order for that to happen, it's going to take truth to heal them. That's why Yeshua says the truth shall make you free. As I said, I'm saying maybe, Lord, I should bring that Monday night instead of Sunday service. And I was trying to get around it. Trust me. I was trying to get around it. But I heard in my spirit, no. And it came right back to me again. Whether people receive it or reject it, I still will teach it. So Daniel 7, 25. I'm going to read this last verse again. Even when these lying spirits are cut off, no longer around, it would take a very long time to unify even those who call themselves followers of the Messiah because of the poisonous lies that have, they have digested. Uh, Daniel 7, 25, 26. Now, now, this is what's so amazing, people. I did the study on this on yesterday. I started working on it earlier this week, but most of it came to me on yesterday. And that's why I, I'm led by the Spirit when Yahshua said, don't worry about what you're going to say. Within an hour, I'll tell you what to say, and you'll know it's not you, but the Spirit or your Father that speaketh through you. That's why you will hear me say, speak ye Holy Ghost, because I do not know how to teach. I do not know how to preach. Only that which is revealed unto me. And so on yesterday, as um, I wrote this again about, uh, you know, cut the head, cut the snake head off so the body can be healed. I actually went to Daniel 7, 25, 26 and listen what it says. Just listen what it says. It brought me right back to the snake. He will speak words against the most high. And try to exalt the Holy One of the Most High. He will attempt to order, alter the season and the law. And the Holy Ones will be handed over to him for a time, time, and half a time. Let me read this again. He will speak words against the Most High. A lot of things he is saying is against God. The Most High is God the Father. He is the God of the Most High. So he would speak words against the Most High and try to exalt the Holy One of the Most High of God. He will attempt to alter the season and the law. Well, what was he doing? He was attempting to change laws. By getting people to lie for him. Having false people to lie and try to come up with a different count. So he's altering the th way things should be done. And the saints are falling into it. And he's wearing the saints out. In other words, he is using the saints. 
I spoke about this, uh, I think it was uh, Monday night as well, how he using God's people, and that's what made me so upset. He is using the people of God to get over, to get money, and then he's turning around and what? Speak against them. And so here, it's right here in the book of Daniel. Let me read this again. It's so powerful. He will attempt to alter the season and the law. Attempt. And the holy ones will be handed over to him for a time. Time and a half a time. In other words, God's holy people. These are holy people can be handed over for, for Satan. Handed over for the snake to use them. 26. Now, people, I wasn't looking for this. It just showed up. But when the court go into season, watch this. But when the court goes into season, he will be stripped off of his rulership, which will be consumed and completely destroyed. Well, guess what? Right now, it people are getting ready to take him to court, right? So let me read it again. It's so powerful. That's Daniel 7, 27. But when the court goes into season, there's a season coming when they are going to take him to court. He will be stripped off of his rulership. That means he will not have no more rulership whatsoever. I've never seen a, a president leave office and campaign throughout the whole year when he's no longer president. Doesn't even make any sense. But to what? Take the money of these blind people that's not noticing what he's up to, how he is using them. Let me read it again. He will be stripped off of his rulership, which will be consumed and completely destroyed. Now, AMP, let's what AMP said. He will speak words against the Most High God and wear down the saints of the Most High. And he will intend to change the time and the law. And they will be given into his hand for a time. He's using them for a time. Two time and half a time. Three and one half years. Huh? Huh? Three and one half years. We're going into what? The third year. Hallelujah. But watch this. But the court of the Most High will sit in judgment and his dominion will be taken away first to be consumed gradually and then to be destroyed forever. That is the word of the Lord and it's dealing with what is happening today, whether we receive it or not. Hate evil. See, I'm not to love evil people. Hate evil. Love good. See, years ago, I prayed, Lord, I want to love who you love. You love all people. And I want to hate what you hate. You hate sin. So do I hate the snake? No. But I don't like what he's doing. I don't like what how he's deceiving God's people. And so I don't have hatred in my heart where I want to do him harm. I don't have that type of hate. But listen what it said. Hate evil, love good, and uphold justice, judgment at the gate. Do not be unjust in judgment. Other words, you judge righteously. You do not be unjust in judgment. But listen what it said. Do not be unjust in judgment. Show neither partiality to the poor, not deferring to the mighty. Listen to this. Not deferring to the mighty. Other words, the same judgment that's falling on some of them that did wrong, it need to start with the head. And some people are saying, because he is, that snake was, he's not his anymore, hallelujah, call it what it is, because that snake was a president. 
He's not president now. We have a new president. So the same judgment, even if he was president, just think about if somebody else had did all this evil stuff that he's doing, they would have been saying, lock him up. But we're not hearing lock him up now when this snake need to be locked up. Because if the head is bad, the body is going to be bad. The head is bad and the followers that following that snake is little snakes as well. So those little snakes need to repent. Those little demons need to repent. Listen what it said. But let justice, judgment, Run down like water. People, you're not to do unrighteous judgment. You're not to do partial judgment. And so because somebody was president, they can be above the law. But yet, if a, 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 a smaller person do that stuff, you're going to put him behind bars, then you are an unrighteous judge. So you are to judge him the same way that you would judge me. You do not allow a person that think he is mighty, think he is above everyone else, to get away with stuff that somebody else can't get away with. That is not righteous judgment. Let judgment start at the gate. Start at the head. Hallelujah. But let just the judgment ring down like water. And righteousness like a mighty stream. Take away from me the noise of your singing. Why do you want it this day of Adonai? It is darkness, <laughs> not light. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of Adonai. And this day it's not light, it is darkness. And because it's darkness, people are stumbling all over the word of God. They are stumbling over what's right and what is wrong. Cut the snake head off, lying spirit, and root up bad seeds. But again, I continue to hear, cut the snake head off, but it will take a long time for the body of the Messiah to heal. So I heard that snakes could probably live on for minutes or even hours after servicing the head isn't going to cause immediately death in the animal. Although if this snake head is cut off, this lion spirit I'm talking about, not a physically, I'm speaking of a spiritual thing now, not a natural thing, not go cut nobody head off, you going to jail and going to hell too. So if anybody say, I say cut the snake head off, that snake you are lying. What I mean, cut him off, get him out of the way, stop listening to him. Then he will what? Kind of disappear. But now we need to know what the snake is up to because you need to know what your enemies is up to. Because if you don't know what your enemy is up to, he can cause a lot of problems. Hallelujah. Cut the snake head off. So I heard that snakes could probably live for live on for minutes or even hours. That means even if you cut this snake head off, he's no longer around to deceive. One day he's going to leave this world. So will I and so will you as well. But it's still going to take a long time for the body to heal because so much poison have went into their hearts. And because of that poison, they hate, and the Bible says, if you hate anyone, you are a murderer. See, I don't hate him. No, I hate the evil. You the love the person. That means love workers no harm to his neighbor. But you are to hate the evil because God doesn't love evil. God hate evil. God hate lying. Yeshua said, no liar will stand in my sight. He that lie, let him lie no more. So I hope he repent. I pray he, he come to repentance so he won't end up in hell. But if he doesn't repent from this evil, he going straight to hell. And all those little imps that's following him is going to hell as well. So those are little demons that following a bigger demon. Hallelujah. Even when these lying spirits are cut off no longer around, 
It would take a very long time to unify even those who call themselves followers of the Messiah. Again, because of that poisonous lies they have digested. They have it in their hearts, people. Daniel 7, 25, 26 again. He will speak words against the Most High and try to exalt the Holy One of the Most High. He will attempt to alter the season and the law. And the Holy One will be handed over to him for a time, time and a half a time. time. But when the court goes into season, he will be stripped of his rulership. We will be consumed and completely destroyed. That's complete Jewish Bible, Daniel 7, 25, 26. Reading AMP, the same verse again. He would speak words against the Most High God and wear down the saints, use them, of the Most High. He will attend to change the time and the law and they will be given into to his hand for a time, two time, and half a time, three and one has year. We're on the third year. But the court of the Most High will sit in judgment and his dominion will be taken away. First to be consumed, gradually, and then to be destroyed forever. See, people, he's being consumed gradually, not all at once. That's why they continue to bring out stuff. His own people are testifying to the things that he did, things that he heard. Even his daughter is saying what she heard. And these people on TV, live TV said, if they could, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to hang him and Nancy Pelosi. They wanted to kill both of them. And whoever they got their hands on, when the Bible said, thou shalt not murder, and you going to say that you're going to pardon these people, people of God, let me tell you, if he get back in office, he will not want to leave. You will have to arrest him. To get him out. Remember these words. You will, you will have to arrest this dictator. That's why he loved Putin. That's why he loved uh, all of these dictators. Because he wanted to be just like them. His plan wasn't to leave office. Even if he went back in there. Which I don't think no way he will. But I won't say he will not. Because sometimes. God will allow you to get what you ask for. Not that it is his will, but if the majority of people want that snake, he will allow that snake to get back in office. Like I said, when I said when he first became president, he's going to be the worst headache the Republican ever had. He had proved me to be right. He had proved that prophecy to be right. So if he get back in there, do you actually think he's planning on leaving? No. He want to be a dictator. He want to stay there forever. That's why he said another three years. No, another eight years. And on and on and on. Did you miss that? Do you think that was a joke? No. When he said he wished his people would bow down to him like other those uh, dictators, do you think that was a joke? No. Look at his mouth when he speaks. And his reaction, it wasn't a joke. If you think it was a joke, you are a joke. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, Lord, don't let nothing come out of my mouth that's not like you. But whatever you put in my mouth, this is what I shall speak. Hallelujah. Part two again. Enough is enough. Cut that snake head off. Lot of spirit and root up that seed. Do not. Let me go back and read this again. Hate evil, love good, uphold justice, judgment at the gate. People of God, you need to hold judgment at the gate. Do not be partial when it comes to judgment. If you're going to judge somebody else for doing the same thing that somebody else is doing, that's unrighteous judgment. But judge righteously. Do not call good evil. And do not call evil good. Do not be unjust in judgment. Show neither partiality to the poor, not deferring respect, honor to the mighty. Do not hate your brother in your heart. See, he's not even my brother. 
because my brother would act that way. I'm speaking of spiritual. Do not hate anyone. The Bible says if you hate anyone, you are a murderer. So it letting us know, even though we do not agree with certain things, do not let hate come in your heart. Because if hate come in your heart, you'll do evil. This man have a lot of hate in his heart. That's why he's doing all this evil. But listen what it says. Let me read the whole verse. Do not hate your brother in your heart, but rebuke your neighbor. See, I have the authority to rebuke my neighbor. Rebuke before the whole assembly. Those leaders, notice, those leaders who continue sinning as a warning to others. I'm going to read the whole scripture later. I'm just sharing what I, uh, part of it. Do not hate your brother in your heart, but rebuke your neighbor. Rebuke before the whole assembly those leaders who continue sinning as a warning to the other. So, we are to rebuke leaders. We are to rebuke pastors, teachers, ministers, prophets, prophetess, whoever they are. When they are lying, when they are sinning, we are to rebuke them in the front of the congregation, people. In front of the congregation. Many of us do not agree with certain things, but we won't open our mouth. We go behind the curtain. We wait till we get out and get on the phone and talk about things that we know is not right. Instead of rebuking those leaders in front of the whole church. Hallelujah. But let justice, judgment run down like water. And righteousness like a mighty stream. Daniel had a dream and vision and he wrote the dream down. And this is the account. In other words, we're covering some of these. We might not get to it today. All of that. Leviticus 19.15. Leviticus 19.15. Reading from Complete Jewish Bible. Do not be unjust in judgment. Show neither partiality to the poor, nor deference to the mighty. But with justice, judgment, judge your neighbor. King, New King James Version, same verse. You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. See, we are honoring the person of of the mighty, but hallelujah, he not the mighty God. He was mighty at one time. He was the head of United States as far as president as one time, but he was never in the head of God. He was never in the head of Yahshua. He thought he was in head of everybody, everything, no matter what the situation is, he had to stick his head in there. That snake head need to be gradually cut off. In righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. Other words, don't do no unrighteous judgment. AMP. You shall not do injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor show a preference for the great. But judge your neighbor fairly. That's that key word. Fairly. <clears throat> Leviticus 19 and 16. Leviticus 19 and 16. Watch this. You shall not go around as a gossip among your people. And you are not to act against the life of your neighbor. In other words, you're not to kill anybody. Read it again. You shall not go around as a gossip. Boy. <laughs> among your people. And you're not to act against the life of your neighbor. With slander 
a false testimony. Notice what it said. Of slander and false what? Testimony. I am the Lord. Rebuke. Verse 17. Do not hate your brother in your heart, but rebuke your neighbor frankly so that you won't carry sin because of him. I'll read that again. Do not hate your brother in your heart, but rebuke your neighbor frankly so that you won't carry sin because of him. Just think of how many people are carrying sin because of him. If I have hatred in my heart, I will be carrying sin because of him. That's why the Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love works no ill towards neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Honor thy father and thy mother. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If any other commandment is comprehended in this saying, namely, love works no ill towards neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So you do not carry sin in your heart. Because if you carry sin in your heart, you're going to hell. I'm going to hell. So I have better sense than, have, than to have hatred in my heart. But I'm not to love evil. I am to love good. I am to hate evil. I am to expose evil that others might fear. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 5.20. Complete Jewish Bible. 1 Timothy 5.20. Rebuke. Before the whole assembly, those leaders who continue sinning as a warning to the others. Some of us are sitting under sin and knowing these leaders are sinning and continuing to sin. And we will not open our mouth. 2 Timothy 4.2. And listen what it said. This is so powerful. 2 Timothy 4.2, Complete Jewish Bible. Proclaim the word. Be on hand with it, whether the time seem right or not. I'll read it again. Proclaim the word. Be on hand with it, whether the time seem right or not. Remember what I said. I said, maybe I shouldn't bring this on a Sunday. Maybe I should bring it on a Monday. And then I came across this scripture again. Proclaim the word. Be on hand with it whether the time seemed right or not. See, I thought today didn't seem like it was the right time. Convict, censure, and exalt with unfailing patience and with teaching. AMP. I mean, this was right for me today, letting me know. This is the right time. Don't put it off for some other time because I'm thinking it's not the right time. Preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome are unwelcome. Remember, even if they do not receive it, I still will teach it. Correct those who error in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin. Exalt and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity. With inextable, inexhaustible, that a hard word, I-N-E-X, H-A-U-S-T-I-B-L-E, in case I got it wrong. Uh, patient and faithful teaching. Other words, be faithful in your teaching, whether it sound, whether it convenient or inconvenient, whether it's the time you think you should or time you should not. Do it anyway. Whenever the Lord say do it, obey what he commands you. 2 Timothy 4.3. 2 Timothy 4.3. Now watch what it says. For the time is coming when people will not have patience for sound teaching. Boy, that time is here today. People have patience for jumping and hollering. They don't have patience. 
for sound teaching. Not everyone. Some people, should I say. For the time is coming when people will not have patience for sound teaching, but will cater to their passion and gather around themselves. Teachers who say whatever their ears itch to hear. I'll read that again because it's so powerful. For the time is coming when people will not have patience for sound teaching, but will cater to their passion and gather around themselves teachers who say whatever their ears itch to hear. In other words, people ears are itching to hear stuff that make them jump and shout and hear, and, and hear how God want to bless them. But they are not blessed in God. You want to bless God? Live for God. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 4.13 AMP. Until I come, devote yourselves to public reading of scriptures to preaching and to teaching the sound doctrine of God's word. See, people don't want sound doctrine. They want to steal in the milk. 1 Timothy 6, 3. Complete Jewish Bible. If anyone teach differently and does not agree to the sound precept of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, and to the doctrine that is in keeping with godliness, Read the chapter. I'm not reading all of it. Remember, if you go away from what Yeshua said and what is written, you do not have God or Yeshua. 2 Timothy 1.13, Complete Jewish Bible. Follow the pattern of the sound teaching you have heard from me with trust and the love. Other word, trust. Paul is saying uh, in the book of Timothy, follow the pattern of the sound teaching you have heard from me. With trust, trust what I teach, and the love, because love always correct and speak the truth, which is yours in the Messiah Yeshua. Second Timothy four three, complete Jewish Bible again. For the time is coming when people will not have patience for sound teaching, but will cater to their passion and gather around themselves teachers who say whatever their itching ears, their ears itch to hear. I'm going to skip that one. Yeah, for the time coming. Okay. Yes, they will stop listening. Watch this. Oh, let me read uh, AMP. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenge them with God's truth, but waiting to have their ears tickled with something, with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desire and to support and to support the error they hold. Uh, complete Jewish Bible. Yes, they will stop listening to the truth, but will turn aside to follow myth. But you remain steady in every situation, endure suffering. Do the work that a proclaimer of the good news should. And do everything your service to God inquire. Notice, do everything your service to God require. I am peace and fulfill the duty of your ministry. Those of us who are preaching and teaching the word of God, are we fulfilling the duties of our ministry? by teaching sound doctrine, by teaching the engrafted word of God, or are we just tickling people's ears, saying what they want to hear so they will not be compelled to change, compelled to repent? Again, cut the snake head off, lying spirit, and root up bad seed, but I continue to hear, cut the snake head off, but it will take a long time for the body of the Messiah to heal. So I heard that snakes could probably live on for minutes or even hours after servicing the head isn't going to call immediately death in the animal. He will attempt to alter the season and the law and use the people of the Most High. Even when these lying spirits are cut off no longer around, it will take a very long time to unify even those who call themselves followers of the Messiah because of the poisonous lies they have digest. 
Again, Daniel 7, 25, 26. I'll read this again, and we're going to end and pick up, if it be the Lord's will, on this study tomorrow night. He will speak words against the Most High. He have done it. And try to exalt the Holy One of the Most High. He will attempt to alter the season and the law. And the Holy Ones will be handed over to him for a time, time, and half a time. But when the court goes into session, he will be stripped of his rulership, which will be consumed and completely destroyed. AMP. He will speak words against the Most High God and wear down the saints of the Most High. And he will intend to change the time and the law. And they will be given into and they will be given into his hand for a time, two time, and a half a time, three and one half years. We're in this third year. But the court of the Most High will sit in judgment, and his dominion will be taken away, first to be consumed, gradually, and then to be destroyed forever. Hate evil, love good, uphold justice, judgment at the gate. Do not be unjust in judgment. Show neither partiality to the poor, nor deferring respect, honor to the mighty. But let justice, judgment, run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Daniel had a dream and vision, and he wrote the dream down, and this is the account. So if it be the Lord's will, we will pick back up on this study tomorrow night. People of God, let's not be unlearned anymore. Let's not walk in darkness anymore. Because the, uh, we're coming back into it somewhere where people want the day of Adonai. And the Bible said the day of Adonai, which means the day of the Lord, is not light, but it's darkness. And one going to say complete darkness. So these are the days of the Lord. And it's not light. It's darkness. And because of the darkness, many of us are stumbling, yielding to lies and deception, yielding to same devices, yielding to same attack. But we that abide in Yeshua, we don't have to walk in that darkness. He will give us light. He will give us discernment where we will know what's good, and what's evil. Because as long as I follow the light. As he is the light. I will not stumble. But if I'm following darkness. Which is Satan. I will stumble. So we see in scripture. How he was going to give the holy people. These were people of God. The holy people of the most high unto him. And how he was going to use them. For a year. Two years and three years. People of God, whether we believe it, when we receive a lie, we're being used. When we receive deception, we're being used. We do not want the truth because we don't want to change our mind. We will not even watch the truth. When we have it on the in these uh in these meetings that they have it. And these are not even uh, what you call Democrats uh, supporters. These are people that was working in the White House with him, heard what came out of his mouth, showing email of what was said and what was done. But we are rejecting it. You know why? Because this is the day of darkness. It's not the day of light. But remember what Yeshua said. He he that is blind, he came to open the eyes of the blind. He that could not see, he came that they might see, not they will see. He that could see, he came that they might not see. So a lot of people can't see this evil. And he that could not see, he came that they might see. 
So some of us cannot see. So we need to ask the Lord, Lord, reopen my blind eyes. Reopen me. They was one open, but we closed them. And we need to ask the Lord to what? Reopen our blind eyes. Kind of like Paul. Paul had to be knocked down to the ground before his eyes was reopened. Paul could see, but he became blind. And then when he prayed, the Lord sent Ananias to lay his hand on Paul. And when Ananias sent, when the Lord sent Ananias to lay his hand on Paul, Paul's eyes was reopened. So what did Paul do when his eyes was reopened? He did something he had not done before. He went straight into the synagogue and teaching. Yes, Yeshua the Messiah is the Son of God. Well, remember before he was persecuting people that were teaching that name. He was standing there when Stephen was stoned to death. So that just shows us how our spiritually eyes can be closed. But once they are open, we need a revelation to open our eyes. I pray a revelation went today that will open somebody's eyes that was not able to see. So once Paul received his sight, what did he do in 1 Corinthians 15? The Bible said he went straight forth in the book of Acts. He went straight forth in the synagogue, teaching what he was actually against. He was teaching, yes, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He is the Son of God. So what happened? He had a revelation. The Lord revealed himself to Paul. And Paul wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. In other words, he didn't teach what was according to man. He taught what was according, written down in scripture. This is what we are to teach what is according to what's written down in scripture. As when the Lord placed it in my spirit about cut the snake head off, there was a scripture to go right along with it. As I said, oh, Lord, should I like say this? Should I teach that? Cut the snakes, and I implore, cut the snakes head off, which means lying spirit, false teaching. Should I teach that? Came right into the book of Daniel that actually tells me Yes, teach it, because this is actually what's happening. We are doing unrighteous judgment. We are not doing righteous judgment. And so tomorrow we're going to pick up on this, and we're going to go right, look back into, uh, I don't know how far the Lord would want me to read it, but goes right into 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? Are you unworthy to judge your own brothers? See, we feel like we shouldn't judge our brothers. The Bible said that's who we are to judge. We are to judge our brothers. If we care about them, we're concerned about their soul, we are to rebuke them. We are to rebuke leaders that teach in lies and deception according to the word of God. Why? Because we don't want them to stay that way. We do not want them to end up in hell. We want them to end up in heaven Stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah and go into those gates. We do not want them to go to heaven, stand in the seat, uh, at the seat of Yeshua the Messiah and be cast down to hell. Because we're the one that's going to be judged, those of us who are in Yeshua. That's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 or maybe in 6, uh, God is going to judge the world. Remember what Paul said, he handed him over to Satan that his soul might be saved in the last days. Some of us have been handed over to Satan. Teachers of God have been handed over to Satan, that their souls might, not will, might be saved in the last days. But how are our souls going to be saved for eternity? We must abide in the truth. We must be sanctified through the truth. Remember, Yeshua said in John 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. 
not lies and deception. Your word is true. In other words, God's word is true. And in order for us to be sanctified people, we need to receive the truth. In other words, we are not being sanctified. Hallelujah. Once, once, and for, uh, once again, just in case we have someone that's not in the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. And we believe on God and believe that God raised us sure from the dead. We're justified by our faith. Then the Bible teaches us we're to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God has raised Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead. Uh, First John um I mean, Romans 10 and 13, that was Romans 10 and 13. Out of the heart, man, believing unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, that was Roman, that was Roman 10, 9 through 10. Uh, Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, that's the Lord, shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, that does not continue to believe, will be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28 and 13, he that confesses, continue to his sin and forsake them, repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin, repent not, will not prosper. Yes, sure. So, God, I pray your word root up some bad seeds today in the name of Yeshua. Let truth rain down like dew, O God. Saturate our heart. Sanctify us, O God, through your truth because your word is true. God, I ask you to bless each and every person out there, no matter what they are going through. God, I ask you to meet every need according to your riches and glory in Yeshua the Messiah. Draw us closer to you, O God, that Satan cannot come between, Father. Give us your word, that sword, that destroys evil out of our lives and other people's lives as well. As your word says, your word is like a double-edged sword. God, I thank you for your word, O God, that cuts so we can bleed, O God, that we can be healed. God, I thank you that your word is like a hammer shattering those things that's not like you, O God. In the name of Yeshua, I thank you, O God, that your word is like fire, burning up all the garbage in our lives. God, I bless you and give you praise. In the name of your Holy Son, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you if you agree with the word of God, start sharing the word of God. People need to know the truth so they can be made free. And again, if you're free, please join us tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time for the completion, hopefully, of this message. You all be blessed. Love you with the love of Yeshua the Messiah. Have a blessed day.